Hi guys, today's video is a little different. It didn't start out as a challenge, it started out as a guide. But this nation of Bythonia, even after my test runs, is incredibly, incredibly difficult. So you're going to be seeing a failed guide run of me trying to play Bythonia. Of course, on very hard, very hard extreme mode. So comment down below where you think the main missteps were, and I will get a good guide out to you at some point. And I think there's still a lot of really good information and guide content in this video anyway, guys, as well. But you can try and spot those bad points and see where we went wrong. But anyway, guys, without further ado, enjoy the video. So guys, the part you've all been waiting for, and if you do enjoy these guides, guys, and you do get some value out of them, they do help you out, then a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. It really does help the channel out. I'm just going to show you while playing on very hard, very hard, and we are going to play on extreme mode. Now, what do you do as the Bithynians at the start? There are many things that you can do, but your main issue is of course that you are at war with the Seleucids and they have a pretty big army that can get to you in pretty much one turn. This army also does have elephants, so they can don't need to siege you down. They can just attack you. So there are many things that you can choose to do. And like I say in all these guys, guys, there are many different tactics for every single nation. Some of them are better than others. Some are easier than others. Some are harder. But what I try to do is show you the easiest tactic that you can do at the start of the game to build a good foothold before then you can go on and decide what you want to do. Now, remember that RNG is highly important here as well. What I would recommend you doing, guys, right at the start, I just toggled the fog of war to show you that army and that it can come close to you very quickly, is I would recommend going and standing next to this army just in case just to see what they do anyway. But there are a few other tactics you can do. Firstly, you can go after Kios, which is right next to you, uh, which is a pretty good tactic to start with. And that is probably what we're going to do, depending on our diplomatic relations with the Seleucids. Hint, hint. We've also got Chalcodon over here, owned by Byzantium. And that's also a good thing to go for. But remember, you don't have a ship at the start of the game. We've got Nicomedia here, which is only a town. So this town actually in real life became a very, very rich town later down the line, rebuilt by Nicomedes, this character, in fact, himself. So that is really cool to see him in the mod. But at this point, it is in ruins and he has not rebuilt it yet. So it starts as just a town and uh, Nikea over here starts as a large town. So it's your main recruitment hub over here. In fact, you can't recruit anything from Nicomedia as of now. So you can go for Chalcodon. That's also a good tactic. Kios here too. The other tactic you can use is going for Heraclea Pontica or the Galatians. Now, I wouldn't recommend that because you are allied with them, like we said earlier on, guys. And I don't think attacking your allies here is necessary at all in this guide to start with anyway. And I don't think that land's going to be as rich as getting some of the land around the Sea of Marmara, all that sort of thing. So I think your best option is to go for Kios, but that only depends. That really does depend on your diplomatic relations with the Seleucids. What I have found from my, uh, you know, playthroughs, from my uh, test runs, should I say, is that they will accept a ceasefire very well. pretty much nearly every time. So if you want to fight the Seleucids early on, you can, guys. You can also just take these units and go and attack them and see whether you can win. But can you beat that army? I don't think so, guys. On very hard, there's no way you can beat that army, even if you gathered all your generals together. So what I would recommend instead is getting a ceasefire with the Seleucids. That's not going to stop them attacking you in the future, but it's going to stop them attacking you right away and help you out for a couple of turns while you build up your strength. So now we do have that ceasefire. We are going to go straight after Kios. We're going to leave behind one of the Akontistai, and we're going to go straight for Kios here. Relatively okay cities, these down here, and they've got ports, a lot of them, so they are very rich 
to get. We're also going to bring this general in. We've got our faction air. We're going to leave our general uh, Nicomedes, our faction leader in Nicomedia for the time being. Leave it on normal. Can we go up to high in Nikea? We can do. So what are we going to build uh, and recruit? Well, first of all, whether you want to or not, it's always a good idea to get this palisade because if you don't, the Byzantians, the Heraclea Ponticas, the Galatians, you all, they all border this land pretty much. So they can just swoop in and take Nicomedia straight away. And although it's not that valuable right now, it's actually making just about the same money as Nikea. So it losing that will not be something good for you at all. Secondly, what we're going to do is we're going to build in the Shrine to Dionysus or the Shrine to Ares, depending on what you want to do. If you want to go more experience for troops right away, you go Shrine to Ares. But if you want the Shrine to Dionysus, it's going to bring you 20 gold, guys, which isn't amazing. So I, that's why I would recommend the Shrine to Ares. We've also got the Tavern here, which is extra population growth. The river ports, you can see, don't really bring much. Neither does that either. So we can go for the Shrine to Ares instead. Dead. And on top of that, we're going to recruit our Romfi Foroi, of course, straight away. <laughs> We've said those units are insane, guys. So uh, why would we not do that? Now, with our diplomat, where do we want to go next? We are allied and friends with a lot of these people, but we're going to go talk to Pergamon to try and get trade, that sort of thing. We could also go for trade at Chalcodon with Byzantium to bring us some extra money, so we'll do that before going off to Pergamon. But that's all we want to do on the first turn, and now let's have a look. Let's see where this Seleucid army goes. That is the most important thing to keep an eye on in this campaign, guys. 100%. So two of our allies have declared war on each other, uh, Heraclea Pontica and the Galatians. Tick icon to maintain your alliance with the Galatians. So that is potentially what I'm going to do. And remember, guys, you've got to accept. So there we go. Alliance in tatters with Heraclea Pontica. That's fine. So we may go after Heraclea Pontica now because, of course, that has, uh, you know, that RNG has happened. And you've always got to mold yourself on your RNG. Like I said earlier, guys, as well, a lot of you, I think, find this very hard because you miss the ceasefire with the Seleucids early on. So you really do want to try and get that ceasefire in there straight away. We're going to get that. We're also going to try for an alliance, which is balanced. They do accept that. So that is good for now because, I, you know, if we're going to go against Heraclea Pontica, we want to be safe on this flank. We'll offer them map information for 600 gold, but no, they don't want it. You can see they've got an army there, so it's a good job we got that alliance. But let's come down here to go and go for some trade, etc. But yeah, like I was saying, RNG is very important, but a lot of you, I think, are struggling because you miss that piece with the Seleucids on the first turn. I think on the second turn, it's very unlikely for that to happen, for you guys to get peace at all. So I think it's definitely worth it to try and get it on that first turn and go for it there and then work out what you want to do. Looks like the Seleucids are going after Apollonia Ridarkos, which might be a bit scary for us. So we want to keep an eye on that army the whole time, honestly, rather than worry about anything else that's happening because that is the scariest threat to us by quite some way right now, guys. So we want to make sure that we are following that army come completely completely there we go <laughs> if i can speak but yes try and get that peace and if you don't get that peace with the seleucids on the first turn if they decline it what i would recommend you doing is just reloading guys reloading is something that paradox players do all the time but i've noticed that total war players really don't seem to like to do that but if you want to survive as Bithynia, of course you can fight the Seleucids and win eventually if you do some clever maneuvering. But like I say, I'm going to show you the easiest way to fight. So if you want the easiest way and you want to survive a lot better, then getting the peace is very important. And if they don't accept it on that first turn, then potentially reload and see whether it works the second time. So let's go on to Kios. They have a relatively good uh, good few units in here. But we are going to try and use our Romfei Foray and our generals to good effect. They've got Zistaforoi, their own general, some Greek hoplites, some archers, and some Akontistai. So let's get into this first battle, guys. The battle for Kios. 
So I'm going to try and take this a little bit slower, guys, and show you some battle tips for these sieges as well. Because I don't tend to do that too much. I kind of breeze over it, assuming all you guys, you know, are experts at this and know exactly what you're doing with these sort of sieges. But we're on a wooden wall right now. So what that means is our Javelin Cavalry can actually fire over this wall relatively good. You may also ask why I have this unit of Hoplites go from the center to the wall. It's because if they go, so if we go forward this way rather than going from here, if I had them set up here, for example, they are going to be getting shot the whole time that they walk there. If we come from this angle, we're actually out of range. So that's one little way of keeping, um, you know, a few more men alive, which in these hard starts can really be very, very powerful. Now, your Javi boys, your Thracian slingers, you can see our guys are not getting shot in the middle here, so that's another thing. Our Thracian slingers, uh, sorry, Thracian peltasts, find it very hard to fire over the walls, but they still can a little bit. So it's always worth it bringing your javelin boys up to the front, just in case they can fire over the walls at any enemies that stand behind them and maybe force them away. You can also afford to bring, you know, all your units up into this middle bit without being shot. This is for the basic stone wall, basic wooden walls, but I believe the second level, unless this is second level, I think this is just the standard palisade. There are occasionally some towers either side of the gate, so then you're going to get shot. But most of the time, you can come right up to the walls. You don't need to worry about it too much. So those are the tips for approaching the walls at the start of the battle, guys. Here we go, guys. You can see our javelins are being thrown over the walls now, right at the hoplites. What tends to happen as well is they will stand in front of the walls, and your peltas are going to throw through this gap in the walls. If you have archers, what you want to do, because in this mod, remember, missiles in this mod have a much flatter, much, much flatter um, trajectory than they do elsewhere in other mods and vanilla. So if you have an archer, the best thing to do is put them angled to the side. And what they'll be able to do is not fire here, but fire over there towards this area for example. So that's another tip for you. And also remember, when you do break down the walls and the gate, once you get your general into the city, it will generally bring them, generally, <laughs> into action. It will, it will prod them into action, guys. So if you want to force them to bring a few more troops forward, a lot of the time, all you need to simply do is bring your general into the city, and that's fine. If you only have one ram going through the central gate is fine. You're going to have to fight your way through. But what you can do, if you only have one ram and they block off the gate, is simply pick that ram back up. So get these guys to pick this ram back up and then re-destroy uh, a different part of the wall. And then what we're aiming to do here now, guys, is surround this Greek hoplite. So we're going to get these guys in here. So... They are hopefully going to fight them. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the Romphi Foroi to fight them in the back. And we're going to get this Hoplite unit to, blo to block off our flank so we can safely bring our guys through. Why have I turned this guy off, guys? You always want to keep some missile troops ready to go at all times for dragging the units off the town square. If you fire missiles at units on the town square, what they'll tend to do is try and run off the town square to fight them. So that is what we have done here. And that is why I have left these guys and off fire at will for now so that we can save them for later if they are needed. Of course, they may not be needed, but in case they are needed. You guys need to fire there. We're also going to get them to war cry as well. And hopefully we'll charge them in the back. And for now, we're just going to chill out. Um, destroy these units one by one. That's really what you want to do in siege battles, guys. Is either go for the town square early and try and take it. And block them off from getting there. Or just take out the units one by one. Because once they have massed a few troops together, it suddenly becomes a lot, lot harder 
to beat them. So that is why we are going to try and just kill them one by one. Now I want you guys to charge in, and this should actually break them because these guys are insanely good and scare nearby enemy infantry. But we're going to kill this unit, guys, and then we're going to assess what we want to do next. So you can see we've got ourselves in a little bit of a situation now. We, we are fighting their hoplites with my hoplites. We are absolutely shredding them because our hoplites are pretty darn good. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move... Oh, those guys, they, they, they're... They're charging. They're charging because they like to charge. But you always want to try and surround enemies or flank them in a siege battle. Going all the way around the map if necessary. So what we're going to do with our generals is actually send them all the way around this way. And on top of that, we're also going to send these hoplites down this way. Plus some of our skirmishers. If we can get them over here. There we go, guys. Um, so you and you can be grouped. So can you two units of skirmishers. Going to leave these guys here. No, I'm not. Going to leave... Yeah, I'm going to leave these guys here for now. We're also not going to worry about the Hippocontistae because they're not very good in a siege battle. The generals are decent, but some of those light cavalry units are never going to be good once their javelins have gone. So what we're going to try and do now is bring our units up here. You can see they've brought their archers into the fight. So we are going to send the Romphiphoroi and the Hoplites to go and absolutely shred them. And we're also going to try and surround them. Now, always remember with missile units in cities, guys, is turn off skirmish mode and just micro them. Because if you leave skirmish mode on, you are going to find that you become pretty darn stressed out. Because these guys are going to be running around like crazy people. Full of tips today now, aren't we, guys? <laughs> lots of tips. Lots and lots of tips. We have caught the Kians, so let's go. Let's keep charging. And always remember, when you are going for a charge, to save your general, you can always press the rally button. And what he'll do is he'll do that and rally and stop. So he is not on the front line of the charge because there's always a chance, no matter who you are charging, that the, gem that the units will die on a charge, guys. Cavalry units. So, yeah. You always want to do that as well. So here we go. We've engaged them on this flank now as well, which is great for us. What I am going to do is get my Peltas in the back here because they should, in fact, be able to fire pretty much into this blob here while we bring our general around to deal with these guys and anything else that comes our way. This is a really good siege battle to actually show you guys because there's a lot going on. So it'd be good to show you all of these things. So yeah, we're going to get there with our Peltas. These Thracian Peltas are also armor-piercing, guys. So that'll be amazing. Let's also try and fire at the Zistaphoroi with them. I don't think they'll do it. Oh, they will do it. Fantastic. Once these guys are in place, which looks like they're just milling around right now, uh, we're going to sort them to fire at the Zistaphoroi. And hopefully they can fire right at the back here rather than the Greek Hoplites. And yeah, we are losing a few of our hoplites in this fight, but we should be good. We've got our general here, so we're going to charge the Kian archers. Uh, again, we're going to rally. There we go. So he's not on the front line of the charge, so we don't lose him. I'm hoping these guys can fire pretty well. There we go. Remember, they don't like to fire when they are behind other units or they are double stacked like this. So this double stack is not that efficient, but it is fine for now. We've killed most of those Kian archers. So what we're now going to do, we've got Akontistai and a general. I'm going to just charge away for a second because I don't want to engage both of those units. Even though they are only Akontistai, I don't want to engage them both at the same time. I want to take the general out by himself. So let's go back slightly. Or we want to break the Akontistai. So ideally, I don't want to charge through there either because by doing that, what we're going to do is get attacked by the Javis, but I think... Okay, let's go then. Let's go. His general's running now. So if we can get a cheeky little charge off on him, he's running up this way. That's going to be good for us. Let's just get a charge off. The Akantis are actually not firing. They might have run out of missiles, which will be excellent for us. This is a little bit of a risky tactic, guys, here, but I think it's worth it. We took out most of his generals there, so we're also going to just run away. You can also disengage, guys. That's never a problem. Okay, guys, get in, get into the Greek hoplites now. We've also won over here pretty handily. So let's get going with our generals. Looks like the Akontistai are running. So what we're going to do is go and break 
this Greek hoplite for a second. Their general's only got five units left. We might get trapped in here, but that's fine. I don't think this is going to be a problem for us because all that can trap us in is Akontistai and their general, which is down to pretty much no men. So there we go. Instantly broke them there. Let's turn then instantly and get this Greek general's bodyguard. You guys keep coming through. They're fighting to the death, apparently. But that's fine for us because that means we don't need to kill them on the town square. You guys keep moving here. And we also just need to take out the Akontistai. So you just have to be very systematic in these battles, guys. There we go. The enemy king is dead. Good. That's fantastic for us. Let's go kill that Zistaphoroi. And what we're going to now do is send um, this unit onto the town square. And we're going to send the Romphiphoroi round to attack anyone else coming this way. What you can do is just block off this here, for example. And anyone routing is going to have to go through that Romphiphoroi and is going to die. So that'll be good for us. General-wise, let's go and charge down the Akontistai. And that should be victory. As long as we can get these guys onto the town square to kill those two Kian archers. <laughs> There's three Azista for, uh, three Peltas there, though, for some reason. I, I don't know why, but whatever. That's fine. Come on, guys. Path a bit better, please. Please path. Please path, guys. Please. <laughs> Remember, the pathing on Rome Total War is not amazing. So it's it's from the engine. There's nothing the mod team mod team can really do about it. But there we go. We see everyone is now routing. Pretty glorious victory. You know, we killed 500, lost 144 in a siege assault, which I would gotta say is a pretty good victory. And plenty of tips in there for you guys. Hopefully that helps you out if you are struggling with these sieges in future, guys. So we're going to enslave Kios to try and upgrade and grow our cities where we actually have recruitment buildings of course we want nicomedia to upgrade and it will do after next turn so that is fantastic remember to always destroy this as well that's not going to be available forever guys that may get taken out at some point so do be wary of that you don't need um you know that in future that amount of money is not going to be available to you but what you can do is destroy these buildings instead However, I think we need all the recruitment hubs we can get going into the future. So for now, what I'm going to do is just simply get a shrine to Zeus just to keep this place happy. And remember, guys, as well, what you can do is hold control and merge units together. And it will merge them like so. With, the re with this unit, we're going to send them back for retraining in Nikea, which we can't afford right now, unfortunately. Uh, we could afford it if we didn't get the temple. So let's uh, ignore the temple for now. And we'll build that sometime soon. We're going to auto-sort the units. We're going to see... Yeah, we can't actually drag that into anything else. So what we're going to leave behind is just one of those Thracian Peltas. It's a little bit of a loss. Because a Thracian Peltas is a very valuable unit. But... We are going to go up towards Heraclea Pontica. Normally, what I would do here is go for Chalcodon rather than that. Rather than, um, sorry, rather than uh, Heraclea Pontica. But because we are now at war with Heraclea Pontica, we might as well not look a gift horse in the mouth and go for them straight away. Of course, we are still losing tons of money. So we've got to be careful with this movement. But you can see... They've got a bit of an army here. We also are going to siege down Kieros here, which is pretty good for us. So let's go for that. We may get attacked by this army next turn, but that's going to be good for us because we have Thracian units, guys. They have Greek units. And at the early game, Thracian units are some of the strongest in the game. So, yeah, early doors. That's going to be incredibly powerful for us. So let's end the turn, guys, and let's see where we get to. So like I said earlier, this may be a longer video, and I'm going to do more exp uh, explanation, guys. If you already know all this stuff, feel free to just skip. All the timestamps are down below, but I am going to talk about a lot of things in this video that are very important for your survival as a nation in this mod, and to survive and thrive as a nation in this mod as well. Managing your borders, especially on hard difficulties, is one of the most important things that you can do 
definitely. It's very, very, very important. In case you don't know what the AI generally, not all the time, they can boat bomb you, but what the AI generally does to choose its targets when it's attacking someone is it's looking for someone that borders them. So, at the minute, what do we have? We have a border with the Seleucid, so we're going to have another one here. So taking Kios may not have been a good option because if we'd have left that there, we're not going to have another border with the Seleucids. But the amount of borders doesn't really matter too much. It's just the fact that we're bordering them and we're already bordering them. So we might as well have taken the free, you know, money, the free settlement that is trading with Byzantium as well. So pretty nice indeed. So yeah. You've got to manage your borders. We're also bordering Byzantium, so there's a big chance that they're going to backstab us. But the main point I want to make here is that Heraclea Pontica, Heraclea Pontica, 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 has been rather dumb here. What they have done is instead of attacking my army uh, at Kieros, they have come to siege down Nicomedia. We now have walls here, so they can't do that right away. So. Um, fool, fool them, to be fair. <laughs> fool. They are fools. I, I can't speak, guys. But yeah, they've come to a siege down Nicomedia. But if we siege down Kieros, they are not going to want to siege down Nicomedia anymore because it no longer borders them. So you can play this game of cat and mouse with the AI if you want. If you want to see that in practice a lot more, check out, I think it's episodes... 17 and 18 maybe or maybe episode 19 18 and 19 of my Epirus campaign where basically we destroyed Paeonia without having to fight their armies at all because they were going uh, they were sieging settlements say these two settlements here down south that were mine so what I did was I went and sieged down the one in the north took that then went up to the one further north than that. They abandoned these sieges because they weren't bordering them anymore. And then went and sieged down that one. I then sieged down this one. And they would then break that siege and come and siege down that while I sieged one further north. So if you don't know how to manage your borders, it can really hamper you guys. But that is one of the main things that you want to learn to do well at this mod and at this game. So make sure you're always managing your borders. There, but there goes Paphlagonia, unfortunately. <laughs> the poor boy's dying. Now, I'm not going to move my troops out of here just yet because we still do have that army there. And although we might not border them, they, they might still want to attack us on the way. So we're going to go here. We're also just going to auto-resolve 108 men dead. That's not ideal, but it's not awful. We're also going to enslave at Kieros. That's going to make Nicomedia a little bit more unhappy, but that's fine for the time being. I'm going to leave behind Petros because eight men in a general's bodyguard is not ideal. They are a pretty upset bunch up here. Let's also destroy that practice range. We don't need that. Why are they so upset? We've got 30% unrest. That would only take us to 55 Paphlagonian culture is causing problems as well. So we may actually need to leave behind another Peltast. So let's pop them in there. 85% right away. So let's take Pitros then. <laughs> That's not a problem. And we'll actually go after Heraclea Pontos now. So basically we are just managing our borders. By taking this now, they're not going to attack Nicomedia, which is absolutely fantastic for us. Now what do we want to do with our money? Well, there's one thing and one thing only right at the start of the game, guys. And at, that is recruiting rom 4 oi So <laughs> there we go. That's what we're going to be doing with our money. But anyway, let's end the turn. Unfortunately, we are still not in the positive, which is rather scary with this amount of land. But soon, guys, soon we should be, hopefully. So we had a very interesting end turn, guys. The other thing I was going to say, make sure you're always going around trying to get trade rights with as many people as possible. That's going to bring your relationship over, up over time. And the trade also does trickle up over time if you are trading with them. So having a longer term trade agreement is going to be very good for you. I'm going to try the alliance, but no. Remember as well that when you offer something and it gets rejected, they are very unlikely to accept something next time. But they did then. So, you know, 
broken that, broken that uh, right away. But that's probably because it was such a good deal for them. But generally, they won't accept your second offer if they reject the first one. So do always bear that in mind, guys. You can reset it by gifting them like one gold. And as you can see, our plan has worked. This army is no longer going after Nicomedia at all. They've gone and sieged down Kieros, which is useless to us right now. It's only making 670 a turn. We also did get sieged down by these guys, though, which is a little bit weird. I, I don't really understand that. But we are just going to go and attack them, and we'll get them away, and we'll just go back. That's not a problem. We're going to pop that down to high for now. But once we've taken Heraclea Pontos here, as long as this besieging army here, there was a besieging army there that we did see for a moment, as long as that besieging army doesn't take that settlement, again, we're gonna they're going to have to come and siege down Heraclea Pontos. So we're just going to go north and take the next settlement. I know it's cheesy, guys, but uh, it is definitely something that you want to be doing, is managing your borders. And as you can see... You can manipulate the AI pretty well with what you want to do. If you want to see some more of that sort of uh, border manipulation, like I say, there's the Epirus campaign, and there's also the Acragas uh, challenge video that we did recently. And in that, pretty much our whole survival depended on this tactic. Completely depended on it. So, of course, something that you want to go and watch as well if you want some more examples of that we are going to fight this battle guys but i'll probably edit it mostly out because it's going to be a pretty relatively easy one so let's get into it so guys this is a prime time to show you this example of using the javelin men on the town square so we're going to pop this guy here we've also got these two units either side what we normally tend to see is if we attack these units and you kill some of them what they will do is try their hardest to kill that um, that unit that's over here. So, looks like they are going to go for it. And once they're off the town square, guys, remember that on the town square they have unlimited morale. So, as soon as they get off that town square, we're going to send our cavalry in too to try and surround them and stop them getting back on the town square because... Ultimately, this game, guys, is in the battles, is all about morale. It's everything is about morale. Nothing else, just morale. So, if you can break them, that's going to save you so many more losses in the long run than if you try and kill them all on the town square, which is just, you know, silly, really. We don't need to do that. But we're going to let them get in the fight. Oh, and we've crashed. So, guys, we have had a couple of crashes on Heraclea Pontica. I don't know why. There must be something with this settlement that's causing crashes. Um, so we're just going to console command it. But I will keep that advice in, I think, just to make sure. I think it was good advice. So... It's definitely worth keeping that advice in there. Don't know why it's struggling so much. There we go. What we're going to do, again, we're going to enslave because, again, we want to grow the places where we do have the best uh, population for recruitment, all that sort of thing. So we do want to grow those places still. So we're going to keep going. We're probably going to leave... Let's see if we can leave Pitros behind this time. Again, no, we cannot. So let's get him out. We don't need him in there. And what I'm thinking of doing is leaving a Hippocontistae. Is that enough? Maybe. If the unrest is gone, it would be enough. Let's have a look at what we have in here. Again, we need to delete that. Again, Heraclea Pontica can be a good recruitment hub for us in the future. So it might be worth keeping that in there for now. It can reduce this culture penalty, though, by deleting these buildings. But I think they're still going to be relatively upset. So let's take the Hippocontistae and let's leave behind just the Thracian Peltas. I know it's a bit of a pain because the Thracian Peltas are good. And let's go after the final Heraclea Pontic uh, settlement. And what you're going to see, guys, is the management of the borders in action. It's very likely that they will come and attack uh, Heraclea Pontos again. But let's also get rid of that and let's get our spy in there. There's something that I always forget to do, guys. <laughs> always forget to do is use the spy to try and open the gates, but he didn't open the gates anyway. That's why I forget to do it because it hardly ever works. 
<laughs> so let's see what we can build. We've got to upgrade this building. Let's repair those. Upgrade there. How are we looking in terms of population everywhere else? Not good in Kios right now. So we're going to get the Temple of Zeus to try and make them happy. In Heraclea Pontica, let's repair what we can for now. And we're nearly making positive money, guys. Very nearly. <laughs> As you can see, guys, they did abandon the siege again. So, once again, them being very, very dumb indeed, which is fantastic for us. So, uh, let's take them out. We are going to take out Tuion. Now, I'm not going to play this because of the crashes. I don't know. There's some reason why this is causing crashes, but we would win this pretty darn easily anyway. I mean, Slingers and two Generals is, is nothing for us to beat so we're gonna do that we're gonna auto resolve as well guys like we've done in many of these guides you know uh, we're already nearly an hour and a half in so of course uh, i don't want to spend three hours on this particular guide because then the video will be too long for you guys anyway now with Tuion, tion tion again we're going to enslave i know uh we don't want to enslave every single province but we want to enslave you know the vast majority We've got a rebel there. Let's knock him out of the way. And let's decide what we want to build. Uh, what we want to leave behind in here. Potentially the hoplites. Not the best option though for us. So what I might do is combine two of those hippocontisti and see. 65% is not bad at all. So what we're going to do then is pop in that shrine to Zeus to try and keep them happy. We're then going to just pop back into Heraclea Pontos with maybe this general. He has one influence, which will help with that as well. But for now, I'm going to just keep them happy for a singular turn, and then we will leave. So I'm hoping by keeping them happy for a turn, the unrest will go, and then we'll be okay. We've got some more units in here ready to go now, which is fantastic. But again, we've got to choose our next target as well so let's uh, wait a couple of turns guys we're now making positive money which is insane but talking about managing our borders we now border both paphlagonia and the galatians so there's a good chance that the galatians i think will be the ones to attack us sometime soon so guys you rejoin me a couple of turns later and i've been keeping tabs on this army while we've been deciding what to do we've kept our economy afloat Basically by selling map information, <laughs> that is the main thing. So there's a couple of things that we can do at this point. And I'm not 100% certain which one to go for because our economy is in dire straits. Like, it's really bad. It's, it's not good at all. If this Seleucid army had been killed up here and it doesn't have an... Antiochus has died, so... <laughs> Rather dumb by them. But what I'm thinking we do now then is we just go and try and take out some of these smaller nations. So Byzantium, which is relatively rich, has got three nice large towns for us to take out. There's also Kizikos over here, which is also a large town with a port. So relatively rich, not incredibly rich, but a lot better than some of the other settlements that we do have currently. And also won't have that good an army. So... Yeah, if this, if this Seleucid army had been killed, I would have been very tempted to just come down the coast here and start taking all these Seleucid settlements. But because they have not been killed as of yet, we are going to try and keep peace with the Seleucids for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop around here. I want to have a look at Chalcodon. Looks like they have left it as a drawout battle for us. Fantastic. Thank you, Byzantium. I bet you weren't expecting this one, were you? So a draw out battle there, that'd be amazing. Remember guys, if you do draw out battles, you've got to beat them by 8 kill 85%. They've also got a draw out battle there. We've got our ships training here to drop us across. So coming across here is not exactly the best management of borders. But honestly, with the borders we have now, there's not many areas we can go. The Galatians with their Celtic rosters are going to be very hard to beat, especially with Ambacti. Jesus Christ. Um, the Seleucids, no matter whether this army dies or not, will still on extreme mode be pumping out troops like no tomorrow. Um, so we we have to pray on the little ones. We have to pray 
on the small nations, the tiny little nations that don't have the ability to recruit massive armies. We've got to bully the little guy, basically, is what we've got to do to survive. Because we are a little guy ourselves. We can't take on the big, bad, scary Galatians or Seleucids just yet. So that is why we're going against Byzantium. So let's get into this battle, guys. Should be relatively easy, but hopefully we can kill Lysias here. That is the main thing. We've got to kill him and then 85% of these guys and the city will be ours. So their general has come in right behind us, which is insanely good luck for us. I didn't think he would come from there. I thought he was going to come from this left-hand flank anyway. Now, the good thing with the Thracians, guys, is that pretty much all of the units, apart from these hoplites, are fast moving, which means if these Greek hoplites run away, we will be able to charge them down and chase them down. Now, the Greek archers are going to be a little bit more troublesome, but we have peltasts for that, so that's not a problem. And we're also going to go and just kill this general right away, not let him get into the fight. So we've used a lot of stamina to get here, but the main thing was I didn't want them to retreat or withdraw after fighting, uh, after we've killed that general. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our Ronfiforoi forward, guys, and I'm going to show you the power of the Ronfiforoi because they are insanely good. They are very, very good indeed. So we're going to show you how good this frightened nearby enemy infantry stat can be. We are getting actually shot by the archers now, which is kind of cute and funny. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> calm down, Byzantium. Calm down, my friends. There's nothing you can do here, guys. Nothing you can do. I think they... Do they have javis as well? But anyway, we're going to throw all our javis. We're going to war cry, and then we're just going to charge in. Should be nice and easy. Not killing that many men with the javis, but it'll be softening them up. Definitely. There we go. A couple more volleys. You guys get that on. You guys get that on. Are they going to go for the withdrawal? No. So let's go then. Let's go. Let's charge. And this should be nice and easy. I'll show you how easy it is to break these units with the Romfei Foroi. Here they go for the charge, guys. Should be very, very powerful indeed. Here we go. They're eager already. They're eager still, which is interesting. Probably because they have the general. But you see that stat, intimidated by nearby enemy infantry? There we go. Some of them... Yeah, some of them, they're not enjoying that, are they? I'm going to get our cavalry round here. And that should be enough probably to break these guys. They're already shaken, that second unit of hoplites there. Very good. So let's get these hoplites in the back. And that should be enough to break these guys. Very nice and quick. Come on, boys. There we go. Instantly broken. And are we going to break that general as well? Look how, look how, look how OP that, that morale damage is. Look at all of those stats there. Morale damage, my friends, from these guys is insane. So you don't win battles by killing the most men. Uh, like I said earlier, you win them by breaking the most men uh, and then chasing them down afterwards. That's why it's always good to have uh, some light cavalry on hand or some, you know, some spare cavalry on hand to chase down the, the units. But uh, what we're going to do, get you guys through. Come on, Hippocontistai, get through them for God's sake. Don't be fools. Get there. Go, go, go. Now kill them. That should be a lot of them dead. You guys go and attack them. And then we should be able to break these guys relatively quickly. Come on, guys. There we go. I'm surprised they've not broken. As soon as that general dies, they will break. There we go, guys. And a whole two men survived on their side. And we barely lost 50 men, which is insane. Very good indeed. Morale damage on the Thracians is just so powerful, guys. And you've got to use it. So let's take Chalcodon. That should hopefully fix our economy. Now, I am going to exterminate. It's going to, it's going to harm our reputation slightly, but I can't afford to be leaving, you know, a load of garrisons around anymore. We need to just get moving, guys. Um, and I'm considering also taking the garrison out of Nicomedia for now, which is our general, of course. Let's go. No, 65%. We can't afford for them to rebel. Huh, that's a bit annoying. We're going to have to leave behind the Peltas again. But as soon as we get that ship, we're going to jump across there and try to do another draw-out battle. Maybe another turn will allow us to... Well, let's delete that as well. That's extra money. That will allow us um, to... Sorry, completely lost my train of thought. Maybe another turn will allow us 
to reduce the unrest you get after you've just taken a settlement. So, yeah, maybe. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> so, we've attacked Byzantium and taken it, guys, but the Galatians have finally attacked us. But you can see by taking Byzantium how much money that we are getting right now. So ideally, I want to be able to keep Byzantium for now. And losing this settlement to the Galatians is really not a problem at all. So I'm going to keep up the war with, Byz uh, with Byzantium. So we're only going to enslave Byzantium itself. Could do with a spy across here. But yeah, we destroyed the walls. But yeah, Byzantium is a very nice little settlement. So ideally, I want to hold on to it. I was thinking about exterminating and destroying everything in there. But for now, I think the best option for us is to just carry on the warpath right now and keep on going and try and take out Byzantium. We're going to ignore their army there. We're going to go for this settlement. So they've got a couple of other armies. But yeah, if we go for Perinthos, we're going to go from that angle. That should be Byzantium dead. And then all we are bordering here now is Rebels and the Asti. Now, the Asti are not a huge problem at all, guys. Neither are the generic Thracians over here. Because like the GCS guys, the generic Thracians, the generic Thracians, Anatolians, and Greeks, the generic cultural factions are programmed to be very passive to the player. Ideally, I want them to take Celembria now so that I can take that settlement before having to come back across. But we shall see anyway. We shall see. We've got a lot of money now, so let's have a look at what we want. Nikea has grown, and we don't have the money for it. So I think what we will do is... Okay, Seleucids are uh, allied with Byzantium, which is not good, because that might mean Seleucids attack us as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, what we're going to do instead, we're going to pop that ship in there. Come on, guys. Get out of here, please. There we go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take out Byzantium, come across, try and recruit some more troops, and then maybe see if we can slowly try and take out the Galatians. I don't know what the Seleucid army is doing because I'm pretty sure the Seleucids are still at war with the Galatians. So I have no idea why they are just stood there. Let's have a look. No, they actually got peace with the Galatians. Well done, Seleucids. That means that they are gearing up to attack us. So let's come and have a look over this way. And you can just see there's just constant Galatian stacks over here. The good thing is we can go back and retrain in Nikea after every battle. And they are going to take Kieros, which makes 800 gold a turn, guys. Very poor, very poor settlement. So honestly, for them, it's not much gain. Um, whereas us taking By Byzantium out here is a lot of gain in terms of money. So that's what we're going to do instead. So next settlement down, we're gonna, just going to water resolve. Hopefully it's not too bad. 60 men, not too bad at all. We're going to enslave again. Again, that's going to be a little bit painful for our population, but it's going to be good in the long run. That's the main thing, guys. It's going to be very good in the long run. What I'm considering doing here is this time just leaving Pitros behind. This is not the most useful settlement ever, but it is good still. Huh, what do they have in here? Looks like they've got a relatively decent army. So what we could potentially do, we've got a load of cash now from that. Is get some mercenary... Do we get mercenary Polypene Peloponnesian hoplites? They are an insanely good hoplite unit. And pop these guys into there. Let's make sure they're happy. We'll repair the walls, etc. By getting the shrine to Zeus. And then we're going to go after Celembria. Which is the final settlement of Byzantium. And once we've taken that out... Then we'll have this little spit of Thrace. I don't want to push too much further into Thrace. Because like I say, managing the borders, we'll have two rebel settlements, which we don't need to manage. And we'll have the Asti, which shouldn't be too hard. The Galatians very likely are going to attack next turn. But yeah, I don't think that's a worry. I mean, Kieros, like I said before, is a pretty darn awful settlement. And on the borders here... They only really have Kieros and Heraclea Pontica that do border them. So again, we can do some cheeky border manipulation if we want to. In fact, what I am going to do is bring my diplomat back across the waters to talk to the Anatolians. 
because what I'm going to try and do is fully manipulate these borders here. Um, you know, so let's see. Let's see whether we can do it, guys. And then we can kind of just decide what we want to do and be in a lot more, uh, a lot safer position, should we say. But yeah, for now, we're going to do that. Let's have a look at what buildings we want to build. Kios would be a good recruitment hub, but again, we need to save up for that governor's palace, which we haven't managed to do as of yet. I would also love to get a recruitment hub in Heraclea Pontica. We are building a barracks in Nicomedia, which should allow us to recruit some hoplites, which are not the best hoplites in the game, not by a long stretch, but they're not too bad either. Once again, Byzantium has been very dumb. We also did get this guy who's got two management, which is actually pretty nice. And rather than attacking my army, which they would have a much better chance of beating if they joined their forces. Instead of that, they're going to just go after Celembria. We have hit a bit of an issue though now, guys, in the fact that pretty much so many good troops out here are garrisoning settlements. So now that we do have that, what I am considering doing is building in this practice range over there. But first things first, let's make sure we can afford that. Let's also... Can we still afford a run for four? Yeah. We're going to build the practice range next. And what we're going to do long term, obviously, in a few turns, we'll be able to start recruiting some cheap units. These guys, some Greek archers and some Greek slingers and some Akontistai, basically as garrison troops and start replacing our good garrisons, which have good troops, with them. But first things first, let's destroy Byzantium for the final time. Mainly missile troops here, but our Ronfai 4A and Peloponnesian hoplites should be able to do a pretty darn good job of destroying them. So let's get into the fight, guys. Here we go then, guys. Let's get into the city. We only had one ram, but we used that tactic of destroying the gate and the walls as well. So we are going to get our guys into the city all through here. We're also going to get our general in as well, if we can. Let's try and pop him through there. The Peloponnesian Hoplites, if you don't know, guys, are an insanely powerful unit. So I am happy to have them as mercenaries now, definitely. It would have been a lot harder if all we'd had were these guys, were the Romfa Foroi. Also, a lot better for, uh, you know, taking out cavalry, the Hoplites, rather than the uh, Romfa Foroi, who are not that good against cavalry, uh, unfortunately, for them. So, come on, guys. I think we can still pop through here. I think we can still push through. All it is is this Foroi and Epibartite, so I don't think it's a problem. Come on, guys. I know, I know it's a little bit tough, but you can push through there. No problem. Keep going, guys. Keep going. There we go. Very nice indeed. And uh, looks like someone was wavering then. Wonder who it was. Interesting. But they don't have many units, do they, guys? So this should not be too much of a problem. So here we go, guys. And based on our previous principles of trying to surround the enemy, that's what we're going to do again. We're going to get our Ronfei 4 around this way. And we're going to get the Peloponnesian Hoplites into the fight on this side. What I'm going to do, this guy did take a lot of damage in trying to push through, so that was a bit silly of me, to be honest. But uh, what I'm going to do, get the Ronfo Foray around this way to attack the Greek Peltas. Go on, guys, charge in. I'm going to try and get my general all the way around here to charge these guys in the back and hopefully put an end to them there. So here come the Ronfei Foroi. They've come all the way around. That's good. So we're going to charge the General's Bodyguard as well. I'm going to rally the General so that he doesn't die. And we're going to go for the charge into these guys. Bang. Straight in there. Didn't do a huge amount of damage, obviously, on the charge there. But uh, our guys should be pretty good at firing into them. If we run away as well, let's disengage from that charge. Don't want to leave the general in the charge for too long. That should also allow these guys to fire their javies into the backs of them. Uh, apparently, we can't press there. So keep going. Keep going, general. There we go. You can see all the javelins flying into them for now. And while we're doing that, let's get you guys in there. You guys can keep charging them down. That'd be fantastic. Fire your javies. There we go. Fantastic. That should be enough to break these guys at least. Uh, I'm not worried about that Greek Peltast. Not a problem. 
Go fight them. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. When you're needed, you're needed. Otherwise, our general might die. So I want you guys to fire in there and charge them, and then we'll run our general away. So come on. Come on. Speed up, guys. Speed up. Hurry up. There we go. That's better. This should be nice and easy, though, killing these Greek Peltas. Ideally, though, of course, we don't want to lose a general. We already have so few generals anyway. So there they go. They go for the charge. Once they've engaged, we'll run this unit away. Okay, our general did die. God damn. God damn. We left him in just a tiny bit too long, unfortunately. But that, what that means is we can actually leave these guys in the fight forever now. Because they're never going to come back. So, yeah, let's leave them in the fight. They don't need to do anything else. This unit should be pretty upset now. So we're going to try and get our Romfe Foroi here. We're also going to try and run one of them through. Peloponnesians, we're going to send you around this way. So there we go. Guys, don't fire as of yet. What I want to enable is these guys to run through. We should be able to kill this general now relatively easily. There we go. It's apparently seven of them left. I'm so, so surprised by that. We've got 39 Romfe Foroi. Should be able to take these guys out pretty quickly because they are armor piercing at the end of the day but there we go running these guys through this should allow us to flank them that's the main thing that's the main reason we wanted to do this is to bait them off that town square so keep baiting oh they ran they ran they do not like the fact that the general is dead so where is our peloponnesians they're very tired right now but we'll get them around this way and we'll also bring this general up the here just to give some encouragement at least there we go that's their general dead now as well Good. Keep firing, guys. Keep firing. Okay, they've gone for... They did go for that second actual throw, which is good for us. So, let's come around here. Keep going. Peloponnesians, keep going. I know you're very tired, guys, but it's very important. Fire at them now again. You guys, I want you to fire at them too and surround them. Peloponnesians, I want you on the town square here. I'm not bothered about these three single units. All I want to do is kill these Greek hoplites now. Let's go. So, go fire, guys. Fire. Also do that. And we'll try and get these guys in there, too. Go, 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 Peloponnesians. Go. Go. Go, go, go. Everyone, go. I know it's a bit of a nightmare, but go. Go, my friends. Come on. Kill them. Kill them. Because ideally, we don't want them on the town square. Because, again, like I said before, they have unlimited morale if they get on the town square. But I think we're good now, guys. As long as we don't rout, we should be good. We should be good. There we go. They're in a frenzy. Let's kill these Greek hoplites. Get into the back of them. These Greek peltas should not be an issue as well. Both are, you know, this Peloponnesians and everyone else are a very good unit. So there we go. Let's get in there. Where are these units here? Let's go with that. Come on, guys. How long does it take you to kill Greek Peltas? You are a... Ru like, Greek Peltas are a rubbish unit. Kill them. Come on. Come on, guys. Kill... Come on. Kill the Epibartai. Peloponnesian Hoplites are very good. Right. Now we go and kill them and surround them. There we go. Bit more brutal than we wanted it to be. But overall, we won, didn't we, guys? So Byzantium should be dead now. So in Salembria as well, we're going to exterminate... That destroys Byzantium for the final time. Fantastic. And we are going to leave. Ideally, I wanted to leave this guy uh, in here as the general. But unfortunately, that's not going to be possible, is it, guys? So I'm thinking we leave the Peloponnesian Hoplites. As good as they are, they're going to keep order. In fact, we could probably get away with just leaving Petros there. Do we have any... Uh, yeah, no, we've got no more people to uh, to bring out into the army, which is a little bit annoying, but it's okay. We'll pop these guys across here. Get straight in there, my friends. And what we're going to do next turn is make sure that we retrain as many people. What? What's happened here? Oh, for fuck's sake. How did you only take, like, one unit then? I could have sworn we uh, we pressed them all. What? Just the general, apparently. Okay. Well, that's fine. I was very confused, and I was like, have we destroyed our units by accident? That would that would have been rather annoying, guys, wouldn't it? But anyway, 
Uh, Byzantium's a little bit upset. These guys are a little bit upset. We might swap the garrisons. No, we won't swap the garrisons there. And these guys are pretty upset too. But hopefully the buildings that we build soon in here will be enough to keep them happy for the time being. But yeah, we're now making a decent amount of cash. We just need to consolidate our garrisons, all that sort of thing. Because we've got so many garrisons about that are really good troops. If we could take all of these garrisons and retrain them, we'd have a pretty good army. That's that's the problem right now. We don't have the money to sustain the garrisons that we have. So, yeah. And it looks like the uh, Galatians are actually going after the Anatolians too. So, rather than talking to them, we probably want to talk to the Greek city-states instead so yeah we will we will uh no in fact we'll come and stand here because we're within a turn of going to the greek city states if the anatolians ignore our offer so let's end the turn guys and let's see where we can get to in the next couple of turns and it goes from bad to worse the Seleucids have attacked us with of course a full stack wow <laughs> Oh, fantastic. We'll try and get out of this, but it may not be savable, guys. It may not be savable, which would be a nightmare, of course. We have got some... Mm, let's not repair those, then. We need to make sure we can uh, retrain all them. Um, well, I think we go on a mass building-destroying campaign to try and get some cash and see if we can just get some more mercenaries. So, Heraclea Pontica as well. Let's say we're not going to train from up here for now. So, yeah, destroy them. We're going to train from down in the south. So, we've got 4,000 there. Let's also pop that in. We are building that in there too. Do we still have an extra turn or so to wait. Looks like a spawned in army. So, I don't know where they've got that from. I thought they only started with one. Unfortunately, I don't think the Seleucids are at war with anyone else. So, just us, which is a little bit annoying, but what can you do? Is there any mercenaries available in our hometown? Yes, there is. There's a lot. Hmm. We got mercenary Galatians. We've also got the Galatian Thorakitai, who's an insanely good unit. We've got Galatians. We've got Carrion Heavy Infantry. So, next turn, let's hope that we have enough money to get some more units and we're gonna have to fight this aren't we guys <laughs> we're gonna have to so guys it has come to this hasn't it it has come to this the galatians just kind of chilling right now so i'll let you know what my plan was with them it was to um basically take Kieros back, take Bithynion, and then sell Bithynion to either the GCS or the Anatolians, and then we wouldn't have a border with the Galatians, so they couldn't actually attack us. That is a good plan still, but what I'm considering doing now is gathering all our troops together. We're going to pop here. We're going to grab you. Oh, you can only go there. Oh, you can't even get in there. That's, that's really annoying. You guys can't even reach either. Fuck me, bro. Why have you got so little movement? These guys can actually join, which is good. And we should have an army of 13 or 14 troops-ish. And yeah, we're going to have some rioting. But I'm willing to wait a single turn to see whether the Seleucids will attack us in the city. And then we ourselves can defend the city rather than attacking these guys on the field. They're a bit damaged. They do have a lot of uh, phalangites though. And some good cavalry. So, I don't know. I'd, it's going to be a tough one. We also did get attacked here as well by a general, which yeah, is just so dumb. Like, just go away. <laughs> But anyway, with our money, let's keep on training. We've got to keep training. That's the only thing keeping us from dying right now. So let's keep doing that. And God damn it, because this guy's a night fighter, it won't allow us to bring any other troops into the fight. So they're going to take the city. But what idiots. Oh, that's so unbelievably annoying. 
That does allow us, though, to siege it down and potentially do a drawout battle. But let's see. So, guys, it's been a couple of days, and I have reconsidered, you know, this video in general. I've recorded quite a lot, you know, about three hours of gameplay. And obviously, there were some very big missteps along the way, I think, in terms of this as a guide. So, I'm probably just going to release this video as a standalone video. As a video in itself. As a sort of challenge video like we've been doing previously. Um, but yeah, so it's not going to be the guide video, but... I guess it's a good video to show how hard Bythinia is. And of course, guys, do comment down below where you think the missteps have been. We are here now, though, as the Bythinians with our final... Well, this big battle against the Seleucids. Can we win? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's see. And I always forget that you, uh, of course, have to get started right away with these sorts of battles. So we are going to come forward with our Ronfei Foroi right away. We're going to get our Hoplites around the side too. And our cavalry can deal with whatever cavalry they send out. Fortunately, they have chosen to make this a night battle, which is a little bit annoying. But, um, oh well, not much we can do about that. What is this? This is just standard Greek Hoplites. Let's go after them. Get you guys to uh, do the raw war cry as well. Same with you. The main thing we have to worry about is the Chalcospides, or the Halcospides, should I say. But this is going to be pretty brutal overall, isn't it, I think. You guys get there. What are they doing with their cav? What is that? It's just a Prodromoi. They're just kind of chilling with their cav. So, yeah. A little bit weird. You guys come through. Let's uh, see if we can surround this Greek hoplite and get them, uh, get them out of the fight. There we go. And you three, so you three, let's group you. Hoplites, going to engage the Chalk Speeders over this way. There we go, broken them, very nice indeed. So you guys get there. And uh, let's chill out for a second again and see what we can do here in terms of these Hulk Speeders. Because, yeah, fighting the Hulk Speeders is not going to be fun. Let's, f uh, in fact, you guys come forward. And there we go. Let's get around the Hulk Speeders again. There we go. Let's fight them. You guys fight them. You guys charge in there and surround the Hulk Speeders. If we can kill them, that'd be amazing. Any cavalry coming? No, it's really hard for even me to see in this light. So I am sorry about that, guys, because I can't imagine how bad the light is for you guys. There we go. Absolutely shredded them from behind then. <gasps> Broken instantly though. Broken instantly. Kill them all then. Kill them all. Good. Glorious. Glorious. Right. We've killed many of them there. Let's get forward into the Thurio Foroi. Let's also bring these guys forward. We can deal with these Greek Peltas. They should break pretty quickly. Let's go. You guys. Get, uh, get, get here probably is the best thing. This is the power of the goddamn uh, Ronfei Foro. You can see how quickly everyone is just breaking. <laughs> just hilarious. <laughs> right, get into there. You guys can get into these Thurio Foroi. And you guys can fight them. What is going on? I can't tell between my troops and theirs at all in this light. Jesus Christ, man. I really cannot tell. I have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> it's so hard to see. Right, fight these Thurio Foroi anyway. Uh, yeah, there we go. And uh, no cavalry have come round yet. But if we can get rid of all the infantry, we should be able to win this. So, not a problem. We may even be able to take the city. Uh, but yeah, let's kill that Thurio Foroi. And let's also get our cavalry around this side. We're going to take a couple of shots, but that's fine. You guys can also go as well. We're just going to try and break that Thurio Foroi. So I think we've only got two units here, right? This is high pastists too, so good units. Um, but yeah, really confusing as to what's going on right now. Let's go and kill those Greek slingers if we can. That should get us the gate. Um, there we go. All right, guys, get there, get there. And let's go. Okay, so that is our unit. Let's get here then. And then we'll try and charge that 304 in the back. 
This is mainly our units. One, of, A couple of them are taking some damage, though, it seems. So let's go for that charge, though. You guys, who is this that's tried to push outside of the gate? Greek hoplites charge. Oh, my God. The, the fact that they are firing more javelins is so annoying. Stop that. Stop that. Can we break them? Oh, we've absolutely ruined them, though. That's good. If we break one of them, come on, break one. Break one, my friends. Break one. You guys get into the Greek hoplites then. If we can break one of these guys, we'll be able to break both of them, I think. Oh, there goes our cav. There goes our cav. Shaken. Still just shaken. That's the problem here. You guys get there. There we go. One of them didn't even charge in, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. Not much we can do there. That's my Hippogontistai just going mental, which is very, very annoying. What is this? It's 21 Greek hoplites. Just charge them. We should be able to absolutely smash them. So, and then go straight into the Neocretans. There we go. Straight in there. Shouldn't have actually disengaged there. That was a bit shit by me. Oh, well. It looks like our Macedonian guys, Bithynian hoplites, are running away. That's a bit bad, but okay. We should be able to just destroy these guys. Like, what is the issue here? Oh, goddamn Greek hoplites. Just fuck off, honestly. You're pissing me off. Them just being able to fire their javelins whenever they want is really annoying. The thing is, though, once they're dead, they've not got that much left in terms of infantry. So if we can break these guys, we should be uh, relatively okay. In fact, I might even try and sneak into the city at some point, too. That, um... Right, what do we have here, though? Like, have we got any units that are, like, right in the back? Hmm. I can't tell. You can't see where, uh, where, where the units are. Which is very annoying. Not gonna lie. But okay. There goes that unit, though. That's not great. What I think we need to do, though, is just let's uh, let's come back. Let's disengage from this. Let's bring our cavalry back, too. I think we need to disengage and re, re, uh, redo this whole thing. So, a bit annoying that you're routing. There's no need for you to route at all. Let's spread out a little bit more as well. But, yeah, I don't think we win this, do we, guys? Like, even with the draw-out battle, it looks relatively impossible uh, they still not got their cavalry out, though. That's good. And like I say, this is pretty much all of their infantry. So, yeah. Very weird. Very, very weird. But, yeah, Bithynia, in, eh, is it impossible? It's not impossible, but it's pretty close to being so, I would say. Definitely one of the hardest nations we've played by quite some way. Whoever can do this, do that. That will help. Go on, there you go, guys. Get your, get your cries off. Get your cries off. There we go. Hippocontistai, let's charge into those Greek hoplites. Who else do we need to fight? I mean, we've got Thurioforoi there. I reckon we can get a decent charge off in the side of them, especially. If they are just going to stand there like that. And if they're just going to stand there and we hit them in the flank, that should be a pretty darn good charge. Broken them pretty much instantly. Good. We still lost men on the charge, though, because that's how charges work in this game, unfortunately. So, there we go. Let's kill these guys. The high passes, especially. Uh, yeah, I mean, what I'm thinking of doing is trying to sneak in the city. That's the only thing I can think of us doing right now that would be any good. Come on, surely that charge killed a few more men than that. Jesus, that was like nothing. Killed like no one. <laughs> Bloody hell, men. Bloody hell. Once these Chalka Speeders are out, though. Oh, that's a Gira Speeders, so they're even better. The all the generals just ran. What? Followers. How? <laughs> How did they all just run at the same time, then? Like, why? Intimidated by nearby enemy infantry. Who? Who? <laughs> Greek Peltasts? Who, uh, who is the intimidating one? I, I don't get it. I do not get it at all. Uh, well, the only thing I can think of us doing now then... Oh, where are you? Yeah, go this way. Oh, no, they brought the cavalry round this way now. Yeah, there's not much we can do. 
I think that's us, guys. I think that's us. Unless we can sneak in the city. Which we're not going to be able to do. Where's the generals? Right. Let's try and do it. I don't think it's going to work. But we might as well try. Uh, you guys, just keep the fight up for now. So that we can... Uh, Try to sneak away a victory, but I doubt we'll be able to do that. Uh, yeah, I very much doubt it. Keep coming this way then, just run away. Yeah, I can't even see where my men are. That's the, that's the problem here. There we go, it's so dark. Right, we're getting the Prodromoi. What is there though? That's 304 Roy Cavalry. Yeah, no, there's no way. There's no way, guys. No way to win this, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, I think it's an L. I think this whole, uh, this whole thing is a bit of an L. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's retreat, guys. And I think we brand <laughs> Bithynia as, uh, pretty darn impossible. But I think, uh, I think I've got some tactics that we can do next time that I think will be better. So, yeah, we, uh, we, shall, we shall come back with a guide of it. But yes, goddamn Bithynia, pretty darn impossible, my friends. Good lord. Good lord. I mean, they did a few more casualties than us, but it wasn't that different. It was just they had an overwhelming number of troops. But anyway, guys, I will come off this battle to our defeated nation. Well, guys, I think we're going to end it there. Kizikus has attacked us. We're going to get attacked by the Galatians up in the north. And the Seleucids have gone away, but they're not going to be away for very long, are they, really? We can only afford to retrain four of the troops, too. So, yeah, I, I think Bithynia, very difficult nation. In terms of the missteps, I think going after Heraclea Pontica was definitely one. We didn't need to do that, and it's really, really quite poor land up here it's not rich at all what i would say is probably next time the guide is going to center around going for this but today guys we were defeated it doesn't happen very often does it paphlagonia did it and i am surprised to say that bythinia was defeated because bythinia has got one of the best rosters that we've seen in the game it's very very good so a defeat is very surprising guys but it happens it happens comment down below where you think the main missteps were comment down below how hard you find this nation as well because for me five out of five for these boys very difficult in deed but anyway guys thank you for watching do like and subscribe it really does help the channel out and i will see you all again on the next video